Hey guys, this is MJ, who's truly locating and educating protocols at risk in these final hours, moments, nanoseconds prior to the rapture of the church, which we know is imminent. Um, actually, it would take more faith right now not to believe than to believe. Um, tribulation is rising, guys. Not only the tribulation, the seven-year tribulation, but our own personal tribulation problems and spiritual warfare is off the charts right now in a way that is unbelievable. I'm, I'm sure you guys will uh, concur <laughs> that it is uh, um, kind of fierce right now. And Jesus tells us to be still and know that he's God. Okay, be still means to surrender. Not just to be still and um, sit quietly. It means to surrender everything that we think, everything that we are, our current circumstances. Be still and know that he is God. Okay, he is sovereign. He is able. He is able to do abundantly above anything we can ask, think, or ever imagine. And heaven is just a breath away. We are not citizens here. We are citizens of heaven. All right? We are co-heirs with Jesus Christ. What is a prodigal? A prodigal is only someone who believes that they have forfeited their salvation by what they have or haven't done, when the fact of the matter is salvation is a free gift. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into this world to condemn this world, but that through him we might have eternal life. And those of us who all are already his, whether we're out there wandering as a prodigal or serving in some ch church, you know, a church building, we are the church, but serving in some church building, um, we belong to him. We are in Christ. Okay, those that are in Christ are seated positionally right now at the right hand of God. All right. So, um, how do you get saved? If you are you within the sound of my voice and you don't know what I'm talking about, um, the Bible says that we must be born again to see the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said that we must be born again. What is born again? Born again is simply believing the gospel of grace. And the gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to scripture, was buried, and on the third day rose again, and is coming back to get us soon and very soon, um, imminently. I was coming in um, to work tonight. I was talking to a friend and um, just kind of like, Lord, where are you? Hurry up, you know, kind of anxious, you know, come on, you know, let's go, let's go already. And I swear, I saw like a V formation of white birds just fly across, you know, my place of work, where I work. And it was the most beautiful, majestic sight. It was kind of like the Lord saying, just hold on, hold on. You know, we're, we're there. It was just a confirmation. You know, he gives us these little confirmations when we get kind of discouraged or I wasn't discouraged, just come on already. I don't, I don't want to live here in this world. You know, we're not citizens of this. We're citizens of heaven. And we're longing to get out of here. We're longing. We know that our king is coming. We know that our groom is coming. And, and momentarily, I mean, tribulation is rising all around us. And like I said, it would take more faith not to believe than to believe. Uh, so if you are not a Christian, you're not born again. I'm not talking about religious. I'm not talking about going to church. I'm talking about becoming a Christian, becoming born again, born of God's spirit, becoming a child of God. How do we do that? Um, God made it as simple as the ABC. Simply admit that you're a sinner in need of a savior. That's A, admit. B, believe that Jesus Christ is this world's only savior and is your save, saves you from your condition of sin and hell, and see, call upon his name. All who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Not some, all, okay? And then it is finished. Jesus Christ completed everything on the cross. 
not plus our works. When we get saved, then we have to maintain our salvation through our works or we'll lose our salvation. Those are all lies of the enemy. We did not obtain, obtain our salvation through works and we're not going to sustain our salvation through works. God gets all the glory. We get none. This flesh was crucified. He crucified it. Okay, so I'm going to try to unpack what the Lord... I just want to welcome all new subscribers. Um, and you guys, I pray for you daily. I just went into the throne and Lord, help us all. You know, we are going through such trying times. And spiritual warfare, put on your armor. Ephesians 2, 10. Put on your armor. Know who you are in Christ. I've linked that in the description box and the ABC to Salvation. Who we are in Christ. It is very important that we know who we are in Christ. Not who we think. Not think that maybe we can lose our salvation. If we don't do a certain thing. If we don't, like I said, obtain. We didn't ob obtain our salvation. And we can't sustain it. We simply yield and surrender to Christ. All right, so I don't have anything from my books to read today. I mean, I have my books out there, but um, I feel the Lord just wants me to share what I learned in my own, what he shared with me in my own private time. Okay, so I came in and the Lord said Psalm 47. And sometimes he'll do that. You know, I'll, I'll be like, Lord, what do you want me to, you know, to read? And, and so he said, Psalm 47. I get to Psalm 47, 5, guys. And it said, God has gone up with a shout. No kidding. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises. I mean, I was just, I got chills. I just got chills. Sing praises. And sing praises, sing praises unto our king. Sing praises for God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. Understanding who we are and who he is. You know, the Bible says that they who worship God, worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay? In our spirit, we worship him. You know, we don't worship him according to circumstances. We worship him always for who he is. Not what he can give us, but who he is. He is all power, all knowledge, all goodness, all grace, all loving. Okay, so that just floored me, you know. God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. Just go to Psalm 47 and, you know, the rapture is, the Bible says that Jesus Christ will descend into the clouds. And that trumpet will sound, the dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are alive and remain, I believe this generation, will be caught up with them in the clouds, and ever so be with the Lord. Okay, um, and the Bible tells us to encourage one another, comfort one another with these words. Now, the tribulation is being set up right now. The global elites, um, I don't want to say too much, I don't want this to get come down because somehow my videos are mysteriously coming off of YouTube. But um, the global elites are setting up new world order, the great reset, everything is prophesying. According, everything is coming, leaping off the pages. Okay, prophecy is leaping off the pages, guys. Literally, I mean, like I said, it would take more faith not to believe than to believe right now. So, um, the princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham, for the shields of the earth belong to God. Acts 1.11 This same Jesus so shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So the rapture, you know, a lot of people believe that we have to go through the tribulation. And, you know, whether they, that's not a salvation issue. Whether they want to believe that, oh, they want my earbud. Um, whether they want to believe that or not, it's, um, it's irrelevant to me because they'll be raptured anyway. You know, I just pray that 
for wisdom and understanding, not only for myself, but for all my brothers and sisters. But, you know, the Bible tells us to encourage one another with these things. When, when God talks about the rapture, comfort one another with these words. Do you think that he would say comfort one another um, that we're going to go through the tribulation? No, he wouldn't say that. Comfort one another. We're not going through the tribulation because God has not appointed his, his people to wrath. All right, it just does not even make sense that God's people, that God would pour out wrath upon himself. That does not even make sense. I gotta take a sip of water, guys. Um, so encourage one another with his soon coming, okay? And yeah, if you get time, read Psalm 47. Ephesians 4, 8, he has rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have forgiveness of sins. So the moment we become born again, the moment that we say yes to Jesus Christ, we are transferred into an entirely different kingdom. Okay, the kingdom of light. There's only two kingdoms, a kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. And if you're not of the kingdom of light, then you're of the kingdom of obviously darkness. Okay. And Satan rules. He's a prince of power of the air and you don't want to be there. Okay. We're not subject to him because greater is he that is in us. Now there's that in us again. We are in Christ and he is in us via the Holy Spirit. So greater is he who is in us than he that is in this world. So we have power over, you know, suggestions that come into our mind. You know, that's spiritual warfare. Not everything you think is you, all right? I know that sounds crazy, but... Um, and God tells us to be still and know that he is God, okay? That be still, I looked it up in the Hebrew, is rafa. And that means to surrender, to be weak, to let go, to release, okay? We surrender to know God is in control, okay? Because, you know, we have a tendency of trying to take the reins and how does that work out for you? You know what I'm saying? So we surrender to know God. He's, his strength is made perfect in weakness, okay? Know that, that we come to him weak. We come to him, Lord, I just need you right now. I need to be still and know who you are because our flesh has a tendency to forget. That's why it needed to be crucified. Our flesh could care less. Read Romans the seventh and eighth chapter. Our flesh um, is always in opposition to God. Always the flesh and the spirit are always in a fight. Okay, just know that from the get go. So we give up trusting in ourselves. All right, and we surrender to God. Drop your weapons, your pride, your shame, your fear, all attempts at self-preservation, okay? And we know that right now these times are, are just so crazy. And who would know what the final generation would look like, okay? When we were kids, how would we have known that we were the final generation, which I believe that we are? And, you know, Satan knows his time is short. He knows that. So he's throwing every which, every device he can in our way to trip us up. But the battle belongs to the Lord. It doesn't belong to us. And he has won it. He has been victorious over it already. You know, even the most rebellious of hearts will yield to his grace if you are saved. Okay, we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. So what does that mean? The grace of God, if you are saved, even the most rebellious of hearts, even the most rebellious will come back to him. If we belong to him to begin with, whatever belongs to God will come back to him. Okay? The prodigals will return to him. We just need to know who he is who he is, the, our, the true 
God, okay? Not the God we contrived up in our mind or the God that we learned in religion, okay? We may have been saved indeed, okay? I was saved at 11, but some of the churches that I went to did not preach the gospel. The gospel was preached to me at 11. I received Christ as my personal savior for forgiveness of my sins. And I believed the gospel. Simply, I, I, I received it, I believed it, and I was saved, okay? And eternally, at that moment, I was sealed. But for 10 years, I ran with such opposition, I can't begin to tell, tell you that God's name was just who I contrived him up to be in my mind, because I grew up Catholic, and then I went to a few other churches that, um, you know, um, God got a real bad rap in those churches, let me just tell you. And I did not understand, okay? My people perish for lack of knowledge is what the Bible says. So you know what, in my lack of understanding, I just psh, forget it, you know, and I went, didn't go to church, whatever. And I, I went down the road that the enemy led me. And so many of us do, but know that God is waiting for you with your his arms stretched open wide that there is nothing, nothing that will separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. He loves us eternally and forever, completely. He loves us eternally and completely like no one can love us. All right, so if you're searching and you're not finding, I mean, our spirits were made to magnify, okay? Our spirits were made to search him out, search out the things of God. But those of us who are saved out there in the world, it's like, and our prodigals, it's like being on the outside looking in. We never fit in, okay? We will never fit in because we were made to be peculiar. You are a special kind of breed, okay? And God made us that way. He didn't make us to fit in with everybody else. So stop trying to fit in. Lay hold of the promise by faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Okay, so we lay hold of his promises. And his promises, educate yourself on his promises. What are the promises of God? All right, bring every thought captive, the Bible says, unto the obedience of Christ. Okay, so the thoughts that come into our mind, we bring them captive. It's like, okay, you're going to jail. You know, it's like your spirit and your soul are parent and child almost it's like you parent you have to parent your flesh you know basically no you're not going to do that no no you're not going to eat that no you're not going to go there whereas before we didn't have the holy spirit in us and we went wherever this vehicle led us okay wherever our mind told us okay we got to go here or we're going to go here or the enemy tries to identify make an identification for us Okay, because he does not want us to know who we are. He does not want the gospel to go out, period. All right? But God never ceases to be good. Let us never cease to be grateful because God never ceases to be good. Know that God is a good God, a loving God, a gracious God. He is always there for us. Read Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. He who abides, just be there and know who he is. Forfeit every other thing in your life, every person, everything. And just be still before God. Allow him, because he shows up big time, guys. He will show up. He does show up. The Bible says that if we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. So I find myself, you know, in... I could have a million thoughts going on and I'm, I have to remind myself, be still and know that he's God. Be still and know that he's in charge, okay? Not your flesh. You know, God leads us to the consequences of our own choices. So we need to free will, remember free will. People say, oh, you know, there's not, God's not good. If God was good, if there was a good and loving God, this wouldn't happen with the raping of children and everything that's going on right now, the pedophilia. Remember that free will is the greatest gift God could ever give mankind. And a lot of us, our will has been wrapped up in prison 
in someone else's sins and, and somebody violated us. So our will got bound up in chains. And when that will is released and God delivers us from the sins and from the torment that those sins brought about and we see free will for what it is, it's amazing. We choose to serve God. We are a slave to righteousness, not a slave to these sins. And it's our honor to serve Christ and be subject to him, okay? And I mean, it's not like it's hitting the clock, you know, punching the clock in. It's not like going to work. We are slaves to his righteousness because he loved us first. We love him because he loved us first. Guys, I can't express all that he just gave me, but, you know, trying to unpack it. Um, Jesus said, John 16, 33, these things I have spoken unto you that in me, you might have peace in me. Remember, we are in Christ. We are positionally seated at the right hand of God right now. But experientially, we're right here on earth. In the world, you shall have tribulation. Not the seven-year tribulation. Tribulation meaning trouble or hardships. Um, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So we need to understand that it's, it's his victory. It's Christ's victory in us. So that victory is complete, lacking nothing. So what do we need to do? Be still. The tribulation is rising all around us, but we can be complete, completely at rest and completely at peace. I gotta go guys, I got a, a call, um, but I love you guys and just please know that we are going soon and very soon, like the white, birds that I saw in a V formation flying above this place. You know, God just confirms to us, ask him, ask him to show you, ask him to confirm and he'll show you, confirm that he's coming. He is coming soon and very soon. Look up guys, our redemption draweth nigh. Until next time, God bless you guys. I'll be praying for you.